We're waiting. Good afternoon. We're waiting also for the Deputy Minister of Investments of Indonesia. But uh, in order to stay on schedule, I would propose that we start with Mr. Adonis Georgiadis, Minister of Investments and Development of the Hellenic Republic. Mr. Minister, the floor is yours. So, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. It is a great honor for me addressing from the Greek House of Davos for a second time. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, all the people that organized this event, and I want to congratulate all the people that had the vision to establish a Greek House here in Davos. Because I think it's very important to promote our country, the reforms we are doing, our achievements, and our expectations for the future here, that world economy comes every year and gathers and exchange opinions and change views. And I think in the effort our government did in the recent four years to reverse Greece's image abroad, uh, what we are doing here is very important. So congratulations. I want to thank you all that you are here. Uh, I think there is not even a single square meter left. Uh, the room is totally full. And I hope we'll have, have the time to exchange some views. I will tell you some things about how our economy is performing and what are the expectations for 2023 and 2024. And then uh, you can make me whatever question you want. And I, if I will be able, I will answer. So, usually I answer, to be honest, but okay, <laughs> I, I will try. <laughs> so, welcome, welcome. Your Excellency, come here beside me. Come here. It's even better. The Deputy Minister of Investments from Indonesia. Please, have a seat. We admire, we admire your country and all, all the achievements you are doing. Which is, which is really important. No, it's okay. Please have a seat. So, since we are uh, in the year of elections, it is a good time just to remember what we did in these four years and uh, what our government uh, made reality in these four years, even though many of them, if we had announced in the beginning, no one would believe us. When, we, when the Greek people gave us the, their vote and the responsibility to govern Greece, Greece had the reputation of the most negative investment destination throughout the European Union. The only thing that any investor could think about Greece was trouble. I remember the time that we were in the opposition and I was trying to prepare for uh, being a Minister of Development and going to London to speak to several funds, the image of Greece was terrible. I can share to you now a story. I went to one big fund and the CEO told me that he had so bad opinion about Greece that he had blocked 030 from his phone. You know, nobody <laughs> could able to call him from Greece. It, w it was the Syriza experience government, which they didn't care at all about any investment. And this is the main reason that five years during the previous government, they haven't been able to present not even a single investment that really came to Greece during their term. When I entered the office, with my colleagues, Mr. Nikos Papathanasis, Mr. Jan Tsakiris, who is here, and I want to thank him, and Mr. Christos Nimas. Prime Minister told us that he wants to transform Greece to the most business-friendly country of the European Union. This was the mandate we had from the people, and this was our main ambition. We worked very hard these four years. We legislated more than 20 laws reforming our system, reducing bureaucracy, digitalized almost everything in our public sector, 
accelerating the process of establishing businesses. We managed in the, the Economist indicator to upgrade ourselves 16 seats throughout 2019 until today, which is the biggest improvement any country in the world. Of course, we started very low, to be honest, so we had uh, a distance in front. And uh, now I can proudly say that we're not still the most business-friendly country, but we are a business-friendly country. We left something for our second term after the elections. <laughs> Uh, so, um, <coughs> after we started changing the environment and the spirit, and the main message we always give to all the investors, either they are foreigners, either they are local, is the same. We respect very much other people's time and money, and we are there to solve problems. Problems will always occur. It's totally impossible having an investment and not find problems in the process, in the best country in the world. What we offer as a government is that when the problem will come, we will find in good faith the solution. And this was very productive. Almost in the beginning of our term, we managed to compete ourselves with other six European countries, and we persuaded Pfizer to come and establish their digital center in the beginning. Now they have a very big campus in Thessaloniki. This was the first big famous FDI that we had in our country during my term. And after that, until today, several have already came. I will just mention to remember, Microsoft, Digital Realty, Amazon Web Services, Google, TeamViewer, we received three closed shipyards. Now three of them are working and they are open, and etc. 2021, we had all-time high record of FDIs in Greece. 2022, we had a second all-time high FDIs in Greece. And our ambition is 2023 to go even better. And the beginning of the year uh, gives us a lot of hopes that this will happen. Of course, I have to say, political stability is very important for attracting FDIs. You understand why? People that spend money want to have a predictable environment uh, before they take these important decisions. Uh, but okay, we'll win the election, so this will not be a real problem. No, I really believe we'll win. The Greek people will recognize that we worked very hard to their interest, and we had results. We didn't have only good... Uh, feelings, but we had results. I just want to, to remind you that 2020, 2021, and 2022, the final result, the final performance of our economy was much better than all the initial predictions we had or European Union Commission had. In 2020, which was the most terrible year for global economy because of COVID-19 and because of the lockdowns, the initial um, thoughts of European Union, predictions of European Union, was that we will have over 12% recession, mostly because tourism. Tourism is one of the most important factors of our economy. Tourism in 2020 was practically dead. So all the prediction was that we would have a double-digit recession in 2020. At the end, we had 9% recession. 9% is big if you look at it per se. But if you examine it under the context of 2020 and the initial predictions of 2020, it was more than 3% better than the predictions. And IMF, to be honest, had much worse predictions for Greece. They thought that we would have a 15% recession, and of, to of course, 9% was much, much better. But 2021, all the prediction was that we would have something like 4 to 4.5% increase of our GDP. Overall, 2021, we achieved 8.1%, almost double the original predictions. And for the first time, 
European Commission um, said that for the first time they saw that Greece had a GDP growth not only from consumption, but from tourism, from investments, and from exports. 2021 was the first time in our history that we had overall over 40 billion euros uh, exports, which was our record until that time. And was approximately 20% of our GDP. 2010, the year that unfortunately we were bankrupt, we had 10% of our GDP as an export uh, figure. 2021, for the first time, we, have, we had 20%. 2022, all the predictions was around 3.5% GDP growth. I can reassure you that we will, the final result will come after two months, uh, but we know where we stand. It will be over 6%. I could predict something like 6.2%. So, almost double of the original prediction of the EU Commission. And again, we had 50 billion euros exports, 10 billion over 2021, that it was our record, and more than 23% of our GDP. I think this is a real proof of the competitiveness of our economy and the difference between the past. 2021, we had our all-time record FDIs until that day. We had more than 5 billion FDIs in the country from 7.5 billion overall of investments. This was the best year ever. But 2022, we will have more than 7 billion FDIs, a much better uh, achievement of our 2021 record, of course, all-time high record, and a big challenge for 2023 that we want to have an even better result. The privatization program that the government has since day one was accelerated, is totally on track. The only privatization that stopped was uh, El Venizelos Airport, and the reason we stopped it was that before COVID, it was going extremely well, and we were sure that we would have a fantastic offer for El Venizelos Airport, but then COVID came. <sighs> Airport was uh, hit very severely from COVID, and it didn't seem a good idea to sell in this period, so we canceled it. All the other program of privatization, the lady here participated to some of them, uh, goes very, very well, and it's total track, which really shows the commitment of the government from the one side, and from the other side, the interest from investors to participate and come and follow the program. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, in our, our next term, this program will continue and be accelerated because this government believes in free market rules, believes in free economy, and we believe that this is the time to change the spirit and the mind of our people to a much more pro-market way. And I think uh, the Greek people are starting to realize that free economy pays off, and at the end, it's good for the people. Because all this better performance of our economy gave to our government the authority and the power to help the most vulnerable people of our society and through COVID and now through the inflation crisis that the invasion of Mr. Putin in Ukraine caused in Europe and almost... Uh, uh, unstabilized the political system to various European countries. So, for 2023 now, the original predictions that we have in our budget is about 1.8% growth of our GDP. 
please note, as I told you before, that all our previous years, our final result was much better than the original expectations. I want to say that even though I was also very pessimist about European economy for 2023, I think the winter of 2022 to 2023, until now, it's better than we thought it would be. The inflation has real signs of decreasing, uh, at least in Greece and in the Euro area, and Eurozone area in particular, faster than in other European countries. I will uh, just remind you that in Greece on September, our inflation rate in annual basis was 12.1%. On December, was 7.2. 7.2 is a big inflation rate, but it's much less than 12.1. And the rhythm of the decreasing is significant high. I saw today the announcement of the inflation in the United Kingdom from 10.7 to 10.5. Uh, it is a decrease, but not fast, very slow. In Greece, we had almost 9% on November and 7.2% on December. So the rhythm is much faster. Of course, the prices of energy, and especially the price of natural gas, that are decreasing in a very fast manner, plays a key role on that. I hope it will continue, and I think it will continue, mostly because the extremely high prices of September and August was most because of the fear of Northern European countries that they couldn't find natural gas supply for their winter. Now, all European countries have fully there have uh, f uh, made full their reserves, so they don't have the same fear. The winter until now was not very severe, so they had less energy needs. And as time goes by, they built new supply chains uh, that can provide them LNG or natural gas from other resources, except Russia. Uh, I think that Russia in the future will be in a very big trouble because it was a very bad idea to destroy your relation with all your clients in Europe. But this will be the problem of Russia. For us, it seems that there is a much more uh, better environment in the electricity price and the natural gas prices, which if affects our inflation rate and will help 2023 to reduce it even faster. So. I think that at the end, 2023 will be, for all Europe, better year than it was originally predicted. Many banks across the world start predicting that there will be no recession at all in the European Union in 2023. I don't know if this will be the case for any country, but it seems it will be better. So if it will be better for the rest, it will be sure to be better for Greece also that the original predictions of EU Commission is that we will have three times more growth than the average EU Eurozone member growth. So I think that we will still have a good year. In investments, I can reassure you that un until the elections, we have some very good surprises that will make a very positive image for Greece in the world economic community, because we're already in mature discussions for new announcements of big FDIs in Greece, and I'm very proud and happy about it. And as I told you, after the elections, which Greece will get the investment grade and uh, the um, international community understands that we'll have again a four-year term stable pro-business government, uh, we will have uh, a real big speed up of our economy. I want to say some things and for tourism. Greece was maybe the 
only the one European country that managed in 2022 to overcome the revenues of 2019, even at least. This was not easy. This was a big bet and a big achievement for our country because 2022 compared to 2019 for our tourist industry had a big disadvantage. We lost our market from Russia, we lost our market from Ukraine, and we lost our market from China, which was closed for 2022. Uh, all these markets together was a significant part of our tourist industry. With these three markets closed, we managed to overcome 2019. All other European countries managed to get close to 2019. As uh, Mr. Fragakis will surely assure you here from our uh, national organization of tourism, I have to say that I love this organization. My mother was an employee of on this organization, so uh, all my childhood was in this organization. So uh, I have to tell you that all the initial bookings until now for our tourist season of 2023 are excellent. The touch wood, yes, are excellent. Uh, of course, there was a fear, and in our budget, that 2023 will have less good performance of our tourist industry, mostly because of the inflation and the recession in the countries that are our clients. And it is a reasonable idea to say that if your clients have a bad time, you will have a bad time. But until now, this doesn't look in the figures. Of course, it's soon, not very soon to be honest, but it's soon, and the year has, has just started. But the initial signs are, are really, really very good. So as I told you, in exports, we go very well. In inflation, things are looking better. In, uh, in um, investments, we have all-time high record. And in tourism, we go very well. Are there dangers? Of course there are dangers. There could be a much greater scale in the war in Ukraine, and then we would have to deal with things that now they are not really predictable. I cannot really tell that. It doesn't seem now that this war can influence so much, because we learned to live in this condition. Of course, I hope that this war will finish today, if it would be possible. I have to say that it's terrible that so many people are killed every day in this war, and there are thousands of people that are killed every day in the war. Today, there was a tragic accident in Ukraine with this helicopter that uh, fell down and all these people died. It's a tragedy that this war continues, and everybody hopes that it will finish. But as time goes by, our economies are adjusting to this new environment. So I don't think that it can influence now as much as we thought in the beginning. So what we believe about the future is that the Greek people will give us a second term. Of course, the Greek people will decide. They are the real boss of the country, not we. But if our predictions are right <laughs> and the polls are right, because not all the polls uh, my party, New Democracy, and our Prime Minister, Mr. Mitsotakis, much in front, are predicting a new victory of Yakov Mitsotakis. If this is the case, then I think that we'll have a new term to finish all the reforming program of transforming Greece, the most business-friendly country of European Union. Uh, Greece, in the near future, can be transformed I will make a comparison to understand what Florida is for the United States of America, Greece could sure be for European Union. Our environment and the beauty of our country gives us this possibility. The stability of the country gives us the possibility. The laws we are voting and the tax incentives we are giving gives this advantage. And the new technology that now are uh, in our place give everybody the 
possibility of working long distance from an environment as Greece can offer. So I'm very optimistic that in this way Greece will be transformed in energy. We transforming, we transformed, and we are transforming our country to an energy hub. We already had this Revithusa investment, which goes very well, and many many ships are around <laughs> in a way to uh, give the LNG to the other European countries and to us. We are very fast in Alexandroupolis port. Uh, it's going to be built a second one in Kavala port. Uh, in renewable energy, we have accelerated our processes very, very fast. Our national goal was to be able to produce 30 giga from renewable energy until 20, 20 giga from renewable energy until 2030. Now, with investments that has already started and have license, uh, we know that we will achieve this target of 20 giga until mid-2024, six years earlier. So we are increasing our expectation to 30 giga until 2030. We are building the cable with Egypt for an interconnection of electricity from North Af Africa. Uh, in, uh, in energy, so we are transforming to a big energy hub. In uh, high technology, Greece managed these three and a half years to attract significant high FDIs in this area of data center and digital technology. Uh, when we came in the government, in Greece there were only two data centers. Now we are reaching 12 data centers. And I'm totally sure that uh, after two or three years, Greece will reach the level of Marseille in Mediterranean and be the big data hub of the Eastern Mediterranean. And of course, a lot of expectations are from the uh, investigations of natural gas resources in the Ionian Sea and around Crete, which would probably give us good results in the months to come. So overall that gives real good expectations of how the economy of the next years. I hope I would have the luck to continue being means of development in this good environment. But I also want to congratulate my accessor, which will have such a good job to continue, whoever he is <laughs> or she is. So uh, Greece is a fantastic place now to come and make investments. Still offers a lot of opportunities mostly because we were a country that for almost 10 years we had no investment at all, and all the prices were devalued and depressed because of the crisis we had. As fast as we exit this crisis, the prices will go higher, so the right time to come is now. Don't lose time. Come now to Greece and invest. Thank you very much. So... If there are any questions, I think maybe we should give the floor to sure. Minister Guidiasanti because he has a limited uh, limited time, and then continue with questions to Minister Yurgiadis. Minister, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm very pleased to be invited here uh, in the Greek House. Actually, Indonesia Pavilion is just next door, and also you're welcome to visit Indonesia oh, okay. Pavilion. Thank you. Um, uh, I'll be very quick, and then I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I am uh, Winnie, uh, for short, and I'm a Deputy Minister for Economic Affairs in the Ministry of National Development Planning of uh, the Republic of Indonesia. Uh, I'll be very quick to describe about Indonesia now and the future. Uh, Indonesia is actually an archipelagic country we have 17,500 islands. And then, uh, you know, we are a big uh, archipelagic country, uh, the biggest one actually in the world. And we have population of 270 million people. And uh, we are now actually the status of middle income country. Uh, but we are as aspiring to be the high income economy before by 2045. So 2045 is actually our 100 
uh, years of Independence Day because we are independent in one, 1945. So 2045 will be one, our 100 years independent. Uh, during the COVID-19 crisis, uh, our economy is contracted, but not too much because we don't uh, really, we didn't really apply the full lockdown policy. We are a part uh, lockdown, but still some mobility, even though it is quite restricted. Uh, our economy contracted by 2.7%. Uh, uh, other countries contracted far below, uh, far uh, worse than that. Uh, but actually, in the 2021, we have started to recover from the crisis. And uh, you know, uh, you, uh, and and luckily in 2022, started from the early 2022, we really recover quite quickly, and then you know until the third quarter of 2022, uh, our economic growth is fantastic, of uh, 5.4 percent cumulatively. So this 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 number is you know higher than the. Uh, pre-crisis level. Usually that before the crisis, our economy growing only 5% a year, but now in 2022, we can really grow until 5.4% is a fantastic. Uh, uh, Indonesia is really, uh, would, uh, if you know that we are going to move our capital city from Jakarta, uh, you know, you know, Jakarta is our capital city, right? And we are we are now in the process of relocating our capital city to the more center part of Indonesia, but different island. So we call it uh, the island. We call it Kalimantan, and the province is East Kalimantan. And we would like to develop our new capital city to become the vibrant city green and sustainable city and then it will be a livable city and then green principle econ a circular economy principle will be applied in that city so uh, the process of building construction is on now ongoing uh, hopefully in 2024 uh, we can start to move the 17 thousand of government services, government uh, officials to move to our new capital city. So there's a huge opportunity to collaborate, to build such a vibrant city. If we can collaborate with Greek, we are really welcome uh, to be able to partnering. Uh, how can we develop the most livable city in the world? That's what our uh, ambition to, be, uh, to have a good city because this will be a forest city because actually Kalimantan is very famous with the forest and then the, 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 the city will be located in the forest area of in that island. So we will not do the deforestation but we will do the reforestation and that is one thing. Uh, the second one is that Indonesia is going to transform our economy. It's like what the Greek, Greek also doing is transforming in, in many aspects. Now Indonesia is really keen to transform our economy because without transformation, then it is very difficult for Indonesia to be a high income economy. Now I know that your, for Greek, your GDP per capita is now around 20,000 uh, US dollar. Uh, Indonesia is actually, even we have a big uh, country, we are a G20 member country, uh, we are the 16th largest economy in the world, that's why we are, uh, we are, we just become a presidency of Indonesia last year, and now to, uh, this year we will be coming the ASEAN chairmanship. Even we have a big uh, country, uh, G20 member, but we still in the middle income, middle income uh, status. Uh, now our uh, GDP per capita is around 4,000 US dollar, uh, meaning that we have to increase three times, more than three times GDP to become a high income economy. That is not uh, an easy task. Actually, if we would like to become a high income status by 2045, meaning that we only have 22 years left to graduate from middle income status to high income status. And 22 years 
for graduating from middle to a higher income is not that a uh, lot of time. It is a short time. So that's why we have to transform to do the, the, uh, the economic transformation. And we are going to shift our economy to manufacturing, tourism also like your economy tourism is one of the uh, the 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 the, the uh, most contributed sector in your economy and also we are now driving up the tourism sectors uh, but we are trying to move towards the quality tourism uh, and improve the length of stay of foreign tourism not only just increase the number of tourists but we would like to increase the length of stay and also the spending of the tourists in our country so i think this this do uh, this is the one that we are talking about the quality tourism not only the quantity but we would like to get a more a multiplier effects from tourism activities and uh, the other one is that we are really would like to shift from you know, Indonesian economy is now really rely on coal and palm oil. Uh, but, but that's not good enough for Indonesia because once it is a commodity boom like the, like this year and last year, Indonesia got a windfall profit for that. And our export is increasing because commodity booming, uh, but that will not be long lasting. So we have to really try to shift towards the manufacturing sectors in, uh, to strengthen our, our industrial sectors uh, because now the contribution of manufacturing sector in Indonesia is only less than 20%, around 18 to 19%. We would like to increase the contribution of manufacturing sector of, in Indonesia to around 25, 28% to GDP. So, Minira, we are welcome to collaborate with Greek because uh, you know that uh, there is like a lot of uh, some similarities. We really, uh, you know, uh, like to power up tourism sectors. And also, I think we can connect one to another regarding to the tourism sectors. And we can also learn from Greek how to really boost the tourism sector. And also we can learn from each other uh, for any collaboration we welcome and we really open to foreign investment of investors because we just also uh, uh, release a new law uh, that really open up the opportunities to invest in Indonesia from other countries. I think I'll stop there and again, thank you very much and you're welcome to come thank to you. Indonesian Pavilion, which is next door. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And of course, we can collaborate in our shipping industry. Oh, yes, that's true. And this is one also, thank you, uh, Minister, to remind me that Indonesia is now really uh, developed the blue economy roadmap. Indonesia is an archipelagic country, and shipping is very important to connect from one region to another region. I'm very happy to work and collaborate on the shipping industry. I know that miners. many of our ship owners are seeking opportunities in the Indonesian market. Yes. And I think in the future we'll find many ways yeah. to collaborate in, in this area yeah. between, between uh, uh, Greece and Indonesia. Yeah, and I know that uh, you are very strong in shipping industry. Yeah. We are the strongest in the planet, to oh, be honest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, th th this, th this is the sector of economy that we are okay. the strongest. Uh, uh, we are glad. To, okay. to really uh, know that you are very But we admire the that. achievements you do in your country. Yeah. We follow the progress Indonesia has in the recent years, mm -hmm. and we wish you to achieve all your goals. Oh, yeah. This will be good for all humans in exactly. the planet. Exactly. And Minister, I would also would like to mention to you that now we are preparing the long-term development plan, and we are now reshaping the vision of Indonesia towards 2045, and the vision is that to be the greatest maritime nation. So if we would like to be the maritime nation, then shipping will be the foundation for that, to okay. connect. We have to organize uh, a business mission from Greece to Indonesia, yeah. and vice versa, from Indonesia to Greece, sure. because this is the time for collaboration, and we will, and we want to be a part of this vision you have. Yes. All right.
I follow Indonesia very Sorry. closely. You have only a 50% debt to GDP. You're not an indebted country. No, no, no. Uh, it's, no. Very, it's very good. That's very true. Good. And and no, not 50% actually. Uh, 38% now. Because uh, during the pandemic, it was like 42%. Now decreasing into 38 So we are actually quite stable in terms of macroeconomic management is quite strong and quite prudent and market You have your, your demographics help you. You have a young population that's increasing. Yeah. You know that the biggest problem in European Union, not only in Greece, but in European Union over, uh, overall, is demographics mm. that are very, very bad. And uh, I tell you again, we admire what you do and we wish you all the success. Thank you so much. And I will come to the provision Okay, thank after. you. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, we also have the Indonesian night, 7 o'clock, across this building. Okay. Yeah, there will be a cultural food provided. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, if you have any questions for me, this is the time. Sorry? Very smart, uh, uh, so it's to speak with Kalimanda because you are near Malaysia. And exactly. Going, so you are the, in the center of, uh, yeah, of uh, Asia. Thank you. So it's a very, yeah. very smart move. I didn't know that. Yeah. I the, know about Kalimanda, I know about the island of Borneo oh. and the Malaysia. Yeah. So it's a very, very smart move. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that it will be like a game changer to Indonesia yes, by relocating. Three countries, three countries are together now. Yes. There's Brunei, Malaysia, Brunei, Malaysia, Malaysia and Indonesia. Indonesia. Uh, golden triangle. <laughs> yes, okay. Very, very, very smart move. Very so, smart. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. I think we have to take a picture, Minister. Thank you both. <laughs> Thank you both for the presentation. It was very joyful. For Mr. Georgiadis, one comment and one question. It's not fair to compare your administration versus Syriza because it's similar to compare Real Madrid to Apollon Calamarias. It's better Real Madrid to Barcelona. Second, I have friends, investors that are coming in Greece, and here is a comment. When we meet in the United States or here, they are punctual in the meetings. When we meet in Athens, they are always in delay. The same people. So when I ask them why, the question is because in Greece, nobody cares. So I think one issue for investment is the legal, how you treat legally individuals, company, 
and penalties. Because looks like Greek is like ksefra guabeli. So I think this is something to be improved. Thank you. All the effort we've done these four years is to change that. And our scores now are very good. I will give you an example. A huge company, EDPI, came from Portugal, applied for a very big investment in Windmill Park. They told us that in order to have the license, they had calculated that they would need two years. And if we could offer them in one year, they would be super thrilled. They had the license in six months, and they made a public announcement for that. The same happened with digital reality. They had the license for Athens 3 and Athens 4 data center faster than anywhere else in the world. And also Microsoft, last year here in Davos, they told to our prime minister that throughout the more than 100 countries in the world that we invest, Greece was the fastest in the procedure. And this was a surprise because we thought it would be relatively slow. So we're changing that. It's not always easy because there are some problems that can be much more complex, like archaeological society or forest society that could delay you even beyond our will. But in general terms, now we're much, much faster. Okay, other question? What kind of investment do you, you expect uh, 2023? You said more than 2022, but in which sectors, in technology, in where? Technology, yes. Manufacture, yes. Energy, yes. Tourist, yes. The energy crisis helped Greece in the investments. First of all, because in the renewable era, in which we have an advantage, it made renewable energy much more attractive than before. Because uh, renewable energy became relatively cheap during the crisis. So there was bigger, in, bigger interest for renewable energy. But second, in the natural gas supply chain, Greece is transforming to a hub. When all European countries wanted to get their natural gas from Russia, Greece was not important because they were taking their gas from the pipelines. Now that they want to reduce their natural gas from Russia and they want to find other resources, mostly through LNG, they need a place that LNG will enter to the system. And Greece is playing this role with FSRU's investments. So, and in the renewable, and in the FSRUs, and the natural gas supply chains, the, 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 the crisis helped Greece attracting investment, didn't damage at all. Digital, yes. Oh, no, 50, 50 billion was the exports. If we had 50 billion FDIs, <laughs> I would buy Davos now. <laughs> No, no, it will be over, yes. I think it will be over. Other question? Hello, my name is Thomas Rotzas. I'm uh, supporting small, medium enterprises in Switzerland and Europe uh, on their transformation to sustainable econ economy. So uh, those, uh, is they, they have the issue uh, on this uh, to repatriate uh, production to, towards Europe from overseas which is a desperately seeking thing in the moment. As you know, there are competitors like uh, Portugal and, and for, for sure Greece could be one of those places. Those companies need really, really, really fast decisions. And you told us about reducing uh, bureaucracy, bureaucracy in Greece, which already happens. I can, I can prove that because we do business already uh, in Greece. But do you think it's possible to have special programs to speed up even this for small and medium enterprises, let's say medium. I will tell you a huge yes. One of the biggest bet of the years to come is to attract this kind of business in Greece. 
I agree. A lot of business will come from Asia to Europe. Greece can take a part, not all, but a part of them, a significant part of them. I want to remind you that until the 80s, Greece was a significant industrial power. We lost our industry uh, between the 80s and 2010. But to be honest, all Europe lost a lot of their industry lines for Asia. Now this trend is changing for various reasons, for various reasons, not only because of COVID or not only because of the war, for more stable reasons. Now um, the 4-0 uh, industry revolution, re the robotics and digital can give you the same production with less workers. So now the difference of the cost between uh, the West and the East is not so big as it used to be. And the transportation cost is more now than it used to be. So there are advantages, com I mean competitive advantages, for companies that would take these decisions. And yes, we have a national plan with incentives to attract this kind of businesses. Thank you. So, thank you very much. Hope to see you next year here in Davos.